right? This is the book of Revelation, chapter 6 and verse 10. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, doest thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwelleth upon the earth? And before I go any further, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, which is the Paleo Hebrew for the one true name of the Heavenly Father being Yahweh, and that of the Messiah whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus, though the letter J wasn't even derived until the 16th century, being Yahweh Shai. As it is written, Acts 4 and 12, there is no other name given among men whereby ye must be saved, point blank, period. The name of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, Yahweh in the name of Yahweh Shai, we reach the Heavenly Father through the name of Yahweh Shai, man. I'd like to give double honors unto the elders and the apostles at GMS Great Millstone, who do real well today through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, and a sincere peace, love, blessing, and salutations unto all those of you hopeful and faithful potential members of the elect who are doing the best to make the calling of their election sure, man. Lord willing, this be edifying. All right, and as we just read, hey, let's read it again, man. Revelation 6 and 10. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, doest thou not judge and avenge our blood? This is talking about who, man? Let's go to verse 9. It says, And when they had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. And for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, doest thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwelleth upon the earth? Right? So, hey, there's there's uh, uh, some vengeance coming, man. And the lesson that I have prepared for today, all right, is a small example of that. It kind of reminds me of the story of Antiochus Epiphanes. With all the nasty atrocities that damn devil was doing, that Grecian, right? The same people as we went into on the last lesson that we we're talking about the Roman candle. The Romans, the Grecians, right? As uh, Daniel had prophesied coming back into rule today, all right? In their, in their modern uh, uh, society, America, NATO, and the EU, man. All right? The same people. All right? And, and we're going to go in on... <laughs> Hey, full circle. Hey, he that diggeth the pit shall fall therein. Right? Esau, the th atrocities that he's done to us and how he's caught a little bit of judgment. But guess what? This ain't enough, man. Esau's got a whole lot more. Because this is, this is all we can find, the accounts of his atrocities, man. Imagine what he's covered up that isn't found. Right? But anyway, let's go ahead and get into it, man. Um, we'll go ahead and hold this uh, precept here for now. Can you see what I got pulled up here? The brazen bull. It says the brazen bull, also known as the bronze bull, Sicilian bull, or bull of Polaris, was a torture and execution device designed in ancient Greece. All right, so this ancient execution device, man, this thing was used. It was used on Israelites, man. All right, let's keep it real. It was used on Israelites. And I'm going to go ahead and jump down to get the main, you know, let's see. It says, the bull was said to have been hollow and made entirely of bronze with a door on one side. Allegedly, the condemned were locked inside the device with their head aligned with the bull's head. And a fire was lit beneath it, heating the metal to the extent that the person was slowly roasted to death. The bull was equipped with an internal acoustic apparatus. And when you go into the details on it, the internal acoustic apparatus, you know, since they said it's a solid piece of bronze, right? That was the only uh, uh, breathing instrument. So it was, uh, this breathing apparatus was basically like a, like a horn, right? Coming in to where you could put your mouth on and breathe. All right, at the at the top of this bull because it was at the head, but then the the uh, end of the horn on the outside broke off into the two nostrils, man. So when the person would be screaming, 
all their smoke from their burning body would be shooting out of the nostrils while while it makes a bull uh, uh, blowing noise, man. Um, or bellowing, if I'm saying pronouncing that correctly. When a bull makes his sound, it says the bull was equipped with an internal acoustic apparatus that converted the screams of the dying into what sounded like the bellows of a bull. The bull's design was such that steam from the cooking flesh of the condemned exited the bull's nostrils the effect uh this affected salakia <laughs> this effect along with the bull's bellows created an illusion that the bull came to life during the very execution hey so there you go man um let's see what this says pindar who lived less than a century later expressively associates the instruments of torture with the name of the tyrant phalaris all right, because the story is the uh, well, you know, I got, I got, I got some more information on it. So, so that just tells you what that brazen bull is, man. All right, now I wanted to go ahead and pull up, which it looks like the the window I had went away for it. Um, so what was it? Let's go ahead and type in uh, brazen bull, famous victims. All right, and who we have here is. Uh, early Christian martyrs, all right, and one of which is actually referred to within the Bible, man, all right, because, you know, the, the, the word Christian, right, that wasn't really, you know, and the, the saint and all that, you know, the, hey, we were, we were the Israelites, man, Christian was something that they were, they were calling, calling us and what have you, man, all right, but they, they put this, uh, during the time of iconoclasm and what have you, they went ahead and tried to, you know, basically whitewash everything, man. Put this word saint on things and, you know, give it that Edomite spin, all right? So that's why you're going to see that early Christian is really talking about you Israelites, man. It's spoken of throughout the Bible, all right? During the time of the Acts that were coming together um, after after Yahweh Shai's uh, crucifixion, man. All right? So it says uh, early Christian martyrs like Saint Antipas, Saint Pelagia the Virgin, and Saint Eustace, and his wife and two sons. Right. So these uh these individuals here, and Saint uh Saint Antipas is the one that you know is spoken of within the Book of Revelation. So we'll go ahead and look that up here in a second. All right, and then uh uh Saint Eustace, well Saint. Legia, or what they're calling them saints, right? But she uh, apparently was was a virgin. They tried to rape her or something, so they threw her in there because she wasn't having it. But then uh, St. Eustace, man, I was reading up on, on his story, and, uh, you know, this, this brother here, man, he was, you know, he was involved in the Roman uh, military, right? And what happened is he had left. He had a vision of, uh, of the Lord, man. He had a vision of Yahweh Shai. And ever since that, he just totally changed. He uprooted, left, <laughs> left his posts, you know, all that, man. Left it, lost his woman, lost his two sons. And guess what? Apparently, they all ended up being cooked in the brazen bull, man. He got, he got uh, uh, banished, apparently exiled to Egypt. Showing you, showing you that they were melanated. But, hey, nonetheless messed up man they ended up gathering them all of you and the woman and the two sons and threw them all in there man so things like this this these devils have got to pay for man remember the, the the verse we started out with right let's go ahead and go back to it because we're gonna go ahead and go into saint antipas here uh next all right this is the book of revelation chapter 6 and verse 11 it says in white robes we'll go back to verse uh Verse 10, it says, And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, doest thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwellest upon the earth? And the white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet a little season until their fellow servants, their brethren, that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. So, hey, there's 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 more to come, man. You know, this, this is the lot of uh, of some of us, man. And some of us have already been through this lot. Pro probably all of us, really. 
the scriptures tell us what the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet pursuing the uh, Romans the eighth chapter. All right, so you prophets, man, you, you when you when you come, hey, you don't you don't come with no soft spirit, man. All right, you still you 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 still <laughs> you know you got you got that different vibration on you, man. The heavenly Father had had hand picked you out from the foundation of the earth, as the scriptures tell us. So there's something different about you, man. All right, you ain't you don't got the go along to get along spirit. So you know, means to say you've been catching hell all throughout history. All right, now let's go ahead and go into uh, Saint Antipas here. All right, and you can see it says Antipas of uh, Pergamum. It says according to uh, Eastern Orthodox traditions, or according to the you know the legend, as they say. Um, go ahead, and just jump down to the point, man. Uh, Saint Antipas was the Antipas referred to in Revelation 2 and 13. It says, but you know, it it, it, it may or may not be. We, re, we really don't know, I suppose, man. But at the end of the day, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll read what it says in Revelation. And, and this Antipas written of this brother within the Bible, man, you know, he was a martyr. And it very well could have been the same individual, man. And nonetheless, the point is still valid. Israelites were being killed in this brazen bull, and who knows how many nasty ass ways that these nasty base of man, cruel, wretched beasts have harmed us, man. And our childrens, our newborn babies, man. If the Hamites were doing some things, imagine what these Edomites been doing. We know some of the stories, so don't be alarmed, man. When this devil shows his horns, he shouldn't be surprising nobody. Right? So it's referring us to what? Revelation 2 and 13. As it says, I know thy works and where Satan, uh, where us like it, where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is. And you notice it's calling it's calling this individual Satan, man. Just like Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, right? We'll go ahead and get into it in a second. Right, referring to the physical counterpart of the spiritual demon Satan. Right, somebody is out here playing Satan's uh, cards, man. And what did it say? Um, Satan's seat is. Hey, that's also in the Second Thessalonians. In fact, let's go ahead and grab it, and we'll jump back in on that. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3 it says let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first hey the day of our salvation ain't gonna come except we totally fall off man and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. So this damn devil's going to sit in there and, and, and basically try to play the most high, man. Try to act like he's the most high. Try to sit in that tent. Look at this damn devil, man. Just because he's in the seat of power, he does think he's the most high. Look at all the things and the atrocities that this damn devil has gotten away with. The things that he continues to do, man. Tampering with you people and thinking that it's okay. There's going to be no consequence, a repercussion for his accent, actions, man. That's why the scriptures tell us what they, they they oppress the people and hold themselves not guilty, man. But they 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 count themselves blessed because we've been put in their hands for them to enslave us, man. Going on, it says, um, verse five. Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things. Hey, so, <laughs> and you got to use common sense, bro. Ain't no, ain't no spiritual demon saying gonna come stand up and sit down in the, and the, the whole world worship it, but hey, the whole world is clearly worshiping this damn devil Esau right now. <laughs> They're already worshiping him, man. Even though he ain't in no physical seat, you people are spiritually worshiping him, and it's gonna be physically solidified by you taking that karagma, man. This ain't ancient Babylon. You ain't gonna go bow down to no giant Nebuchadnezzar. Come on, man. 
This is the 21st century. You're going to take that digital ID, and that's what's going to lock your simple ass down on your knee. You see? <laughs> to the same devil that was doing these wicked atrocities and that's going to do the same shit to you, man. Because whenever you make a deal with the devil, it does not ever prosper you. You can learn that in a damn Disney movie. It says, I know thy works and thy tribu uh, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name. You see? So even though he was in the midst of the damn devil where potentially this brazen bull was, hey, well, <laughs> the heavenly father, right? Hey, he, he, see, he sees the things that we go through, man. And this, again, this is a, a, an example for, for the things to come, man. How much worse, they? We, we're right in Satan's seat, man. And the scriptures tell us in the book of Daniel that the things that are going to happen out here are going to be worse than ever has been seen in the world, man. So let this be an example. It says, um, and thou hast not de denied my faith, right? Because what they would do is they would heat that thing up, try to give you a chance to, you know, deny, deny the Lord. Clearly he didn't, right? Threw, threw him in there, man. Cremated him alive, pretty much. Enjoyed his screams. Nasty ass Edomites, man. Who was slain among you, O Salakia, um, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth, according to. Yeah, so there you go, man. So actually, we can go ahead and, and, and roll down. It says, um, it says, the tradition, the traditional accounts go on to say Antipas was martyred during the reign of Nero or Dom Dom Domitian by the burning in a blazing bull-shaped altar for casting out demons worshipped by the local population. You see, and there you got the little image there, man. Right? So this also reminds me of the, uh, the book of uh, Hebrews, right? Which tells us this real quick. This is the book of Hebrews chapter, uh, let's see, chapter 10, if I'm not mistaken. This is Hebrews chapter 11 and verse, uh, shit, verse, uh, 35. It says, women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance. You see that, man? That they may obtain a better resurrection. Now, let's see when this resurrection came. And others had trials of cruel mockings and scourgings, yeah, moreover of bonds and imprisonments. They were stoned. And they were sawn asunder, were tempted, and were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. You see, the world wasn't even worthy of these individuals. And look how they look how they were treated, man. It says they wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens of caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a good report. Through faith, receive not the promise. Wait a minute. But according to Christian doctrine, they went straight to the heavens, right? They were they in the kingdom up there uh, uh, doing whatever, man. No. They didn't receive the promise, man. Verse 40. God having provided some better things for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Hey, so at the end of the day, man, we're approaching that time. We are now approaching that time to receive these promises, man, for things to be made perfect. You see? Let me grab this last part. <laughs> this is the part that I really liked, man. It's um, like not that one. It's about uh, going down. It says, he was at last overthrown in a general... Because really, actually, what happened, man, if we back up here, it gives us a story of how 
when he had this bull created, he actually put the the um, inventor or the creator, the smith, whatever you want to call him, inside of it to test out the uh, horn, and he locked his ass in there and made him his first victim, man. So, you know, just jumping down here to, to the main point that I was, you know, wanting to hit, bring this thing full circle. Um, it says he was at last overthrown in a general uprising headed by Telemachus. I wonder if that was a Jake, the ancestor of Theron of Acragas and burned in his own blazing bull. Pindar, who lived in less than a century afterwards, explicitly associates this instrument of torture with the name of the tyrant. Hey, so, there you go, man. He that diggeth the pit shall fall therein. You see, the Heavenly Father, hey, though they've gotten away with particular things, hey, it's going to come full circle upon them, man. What does the book of Psalms 58 tell us? Let's go ahead and grab that real quick, and I want to grab something in Maccabees, and we'll close it up. According to Yahweh's will, if it may be. This is uh, Psalms chapter 58 and uh, verse 7 or uh, verse uh, 10. It's like it says, The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance, he shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, so that man shall say truly, there is a reward for the righteous. Truly, he is a God that judgeth in the earth. Hey, so they're going to receive their judgment, man. And so are those who, who who were put to death, man, wrongfully. Their case will be judged. All right, so let's go ahead and jump to the book of Maccabees. And like I said, we'll close it up there. It'll be according to Yahweh's will. It's the book of... Uh, Second Maccabees, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, chapter 7. And verse 17. Oh, uh, in fact, verse 16. Verse 15 is lucky. Oh, man. <laughs> Alright, verse... Uh, Verse 11. We'll start at verse 10 and read through, uh, read through, man. So lock you. All right. First, second Maccabees 7 and 10. It says, After him was the third made a mocking, a mocking stock. And when he was required, he put out his tongue. And that right soon holding forth his hands manfully and said courageously, these I had from heaven, and for his laws I despise them, and from him I hope to receive them again. <laughs> hey, ain't that some? Ain't that? Ain't that some? Uh, uh, some some faith, man? Ain't that some uh, integrity? You see, hey, the Lord gave me these; He'll give me them again, and He let these damn heathens cut it out, man. All right, and this was uh, Antiochus wicked atrocities, man. And you could take this to uh, Second Maccabees as well, right? And, and it gives us the account of Antiochus' death, where he died in a very gruesome way, man. It said that that he couldn't even bear his own stench. The man that thought he could command the waves of the sea couldn't even make himself feel better, man. Going on, it says, yeah. So so hey, look again. These are the things that his that he was doing when he was in his power, though. Um, verse 11 it says and said courageously I was lucky. verse 12 in so much that the king and they that were with him marveled at the young man's courage for that he nothing regarded the pains hey, and, and, and hey the Lord will do that for you man again we got the power that both kills and makes alive in our corner hey, these, these, these men hey like, like it says in the book of uh, Wisdom of Solomon, the third chapter, in, in the side of the men, it looks like their departure is for misery. But, hey, we know that they're in peace, man. And the fact that they're going to be what? Sparks among stubble. They're going to, they're going to, 
Hey, there ain't there ain't no separating. Even death don't separate you, man. That's that's just gonna hey like the book of the Thessalonians tell you you can be right in a chariot, man. They're gonna see you pop right back up and and be in complete glory, man. On some black Adam type stuff. So there ain't no losing, man. The game is rigged and we got the answers. So yeah. You'd rather enter into the kingdom bloodied, beaten, and maimed, missing limbs and an eyeball, man. Because you can receive it again. And then some. Right? Verse 13. Now, when this man was dead also, they tormented and mangled the fourth in like manner. So when he was ready to die, he said thus, It is good being put to death by men to look for hope from God to be raised up again by him. As for thee, thou shalt have no resurrection of life. You see, we're going to be the ones brought back to life, man. But guess what? In our kingdom, you going to be at the very bottom, man. You ain't going <laughs> to you ain't going to be in no great estate in our kingdom. You ain't going to be living in our kingdom just like we ain't living in yours, man. You see? Going on it says, and the heavenly father really, hey man, he's the the creator of all energy so he's got the power to to toy with you in whatsoever way shape or will he'd like to man so again that's the power that's in our corner so long as we uh, uh endure and stay faithful man so why why would you why would you kick back and and try to see if esau could beat him and maybe have esau defend you man maybe give up and take the karagma or what, what have you verse 14 it says so when he was ready to die he said thus Oh, so lucky. Verse 15. It says, Afterward, they brought the fifth also and mangled him. Then looked he unto the king and said, Thou hast power over men. Thou art corruptible. Thou doest what thou wilt. Yet think not that our nation is forsaken of God. But abide a while and behold his great power and he will torment thee and thy seed. <laughs> He said, hey, don't 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 think we're forsaken of the Lord. You might have the power in your hand now, but just wait. You and your seed are going to get it, man. You and your nasty, either idumian seed are going to get it. And again, man, hey, the tables are turning. The time of Esau's fall is here. You see? going on it says um, verse 18 after him also they brought the sixth who being ready to die said be not deceived without cause for we suffer these things for ourselves S having sinned against our God therefore marvelous things are done unto us but think not thou that thinkest in hand to strive against God that thou shall escape unpunished. <laughs> hey, you see that, man? So, hey, you gonna get it. You gonna get it. You, 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 you dig in your, dig in your hole, man. And he that diggeth the pit shall fall therein. So with that said, Lord willing, this is edifying. All right, I just found that information on the brazen bull. And when I really found out how the uh, damn devil behind it all was put to death in it, Hey, you know, I thought it was very beautiful, man. Hey, he that lives by the sword shall die by the sword. So with that said, Lord willing is edifying. Call Halayim Lai Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah by Hashem Dash. Double honors into the altars and the apostles. Peace, love, blessings, salutations unto all those of you hopeful, faithful, potential members of the elect out there. Lord willing is edifying. Until next time, this is Brother Gar. Shalom.